Uh, I, I think that at some level, what's going on now with COVID-19, and I'm talking to you, you know, I'm, I'm in Washington, D.C. We have a, we have a shelter in place order that's been, a, it's been a in, in place for, I think it's now six weeks. Um, I, this is my office. It's my garage. Um, I have not, I literally have not been more than two miles from my house in, I think, six or seven weeks. Um, you know, I have, a, I have a four mile run where I go two miles out and, and two miles back, and that is as far away as I've gone. I have been working at home for 20 years. I have been social distancing for 50 years, and um, <laughs> and I'm still going. I'm still going loopy in this kind of in this kind of um, in, in, in arrangement. So it's really tough for everybody. But let me let me let me just go back to these two points. One, here's one thing I think is going on. I think that what's happening now is a great unmasking. I think it's a great unmasking of a lot of the problems that were hiding in plain sight, but that have now suddenly been revealed and we're forced to confront. Um, things like how precarious many jobs are, um, how under, how, uh, so you have, you have this economy that's, that's seemingly strong uh, two months ago, that suddenly brought down. Uh, that is not a sign of strength. That is not a sign of resilience in an economy. That's a sign of some fundamental cracks in the structure that were always there, but now we're seeing. Uh, one of the things that really alarmed me I'll give you another example of this was uh, some of the reports that came out in the uh, yesterday, in fact, showing that there were certain certain employees were getting paid more on unemployment than they were getting paid in their job. And you had some people, some uh, of certain political persuasion said, talking about how outrageous that was. And I look at it through the other end, the idea that there are 20 something states in this country that still have a seven dollar and 25 cent minimum wage. That's the thing that's horrible. That's the, so it's, it's great unmasking saying, oh my God, we have all these jobs out there where people can't even come close to providing for their family. Uh, when we think about how precarious our healthcare situation is, where we have this ridiculous system where healthcare is always attached to this thing that we call a job, suddenly that's been unmasked. We finally have for the first time ever, people who are freelancers or self-employed getting unemployment insurance. So there's this great unmasking going on. We have, um, we, 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 we knew all these things. Uh, when it comes to education, suddenly there, uh, here in the District of Columbia, where I live, our mayor, uh, we, we've had district, di uh, uh, distance learning in, in, in DCPS, and uh, the mayor uh, ended the school year three weeks early because, it was, because so many of the kids here in the nation's capital didn't have proper internet connections. Uh, it was a waste of time for them to do distance learning. Uh, that's a, great un, that's a great unmasking. And so I think that there's a positive side of this and that we're gonna be forced to confront a lot of these issues in a way that we weren't uh, forced to confront them. And what you see in some of these historical situations with national trauma, World War, uh, Great Depression being one, is that in the aftermath of this, there were some things that changed. Uh, there were some things that changed. So, I, so I'm hopeful on that regard. Let me say one other thing and then we'll uh, go back to you. Uh, I also think there's a reason to be hopeful here as well. Um, when we look at, um, you know, we, we, 30 million people unemployed to me is, I just can't, I can't get over to that. Um, and I think that's just so staggering and, it, and it's, so, it's so horrible for so many families. However, there's something else going on here that I think could be marginally um, uh, stirring for us. And it's this, uh, if I had told you six months ago that we, as a country, we're going to ask, there's going to be a problem, there's going to be a virus, there was going to be a, a health threat, and we were going to just ask people to close down their businesses, to shut down their restaurants, to shut down their barber shops, to, um, uh, and we're going to ask families, we're going to say, we're going to shut down some schools, and we're going to say, everybody, you know what, for your sake, for the sake of your neighbors, for health sakes, we'd like you to stay home. Not just for a day, not just for a week, but for one week, and two weeks, and three weeks, in four weeks. And you know what? We're not going to have troops in the street enforcing that. We're not going to have police officers on every corner threatening to gun people down who come out of their house. We're just going to rely on you to do this because it's the right thing to do. And so what pisses me off, forgive me, is that I see this, I see this, this, uh, this, this pit, the photograph on the front page of the paper where there's like five armed guys in the, in the, in the Michigan legislature who don't want to comply with this. Meanwhile, there are 250 million people who are saying, yeah, I want to do the right thing. And so if you look at through the other end of the telescope, it's actually kind of extraordinary. You have 
200, uh, nearly 300 million people who are doing the right thing for themselves and for their neighbors without any threat of force because it's the right thing to do. So that can make us, uh, so, so if we deal with the unmasking and we actually look through the other end of the telescope and say, whoa, what an extraordinary thing. Look at everybody helping each other out. I think there are reasons to be uh, optimist, optimistic. Optimism doesn't cure things, does, doesn't, doesn't solve problems, but I think it's a necessary uh, first step.